Hello students. In this video lecture, we will discuss class 9 physics, chapter 10. The name of the chapter is gravitation. It's a part 1. Student, in this lecture, we will discuss about an important law that's a universal law for gravitation. The law tells us about the gravitational force of attraction between any two bodies. So here in this example we have two bodies, one of a bigger body, uh, one of a big, <coughs> a big body of a bigger mass and another one small body of a smaller mass. The two bodies are separated by the distance d. The distance d is measured from their centers, the center of the two bodies. The Newton's universal law of gravitation states that the force of a gravitation, the gravitational force of attraction between these two bodies is directly proportional to product of their masses. Means, more is the mass of the two bodies, more is the gravitational attraction between the two bodies. And the smaller the mass of the two bodies, the smaller is the attraction between the two bodies. Now, this law also says the force also depends upon the distance between the two bodies. Force is inversely proportional to square of the distance between the two bodies. Larger is the distance between the two bodies, the smaller is the force of attraction. Smaller is the distance between the two bodies, larger is the attraction. Now, if we combine these two relations, we get the relation like this. F is proportional to mm by d square. If we replace this sign, proportionality sign by equal sign, we get the equation like this. F is equal to g into mm by d square. Student, this is universal gravitational constant. This capital G is called a universal gravitational constant. So, here is the formal definitions of our universal law of gravitation or Newton's universal law of gravitation. Now, gravitational force, the law states, the gravitational force is directly proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. As I mentioned, <coughs> force is directly proportional to the product of the masses. That means if you get the product of the masses of the two bodies, more the force between the two bodies, the gravitational attraction between the two bodies will be higher. If you get the product smaller, the force between the two bodies will be small and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. That means, smaller is the distance between these two bodies, larger will be the force of attraction. Larger the distance between the two, two bodies, <coughs> smaller is the gravitational attraction. So that's what the law says. So this is the mathematical form of universal law of gravitation. So this G is called a universal gravitational constant. Its value is experimentally determined and the value is 6.67 into 10 to minus 11 newton meter square per kg square. This value was determined by a scientist Henry Cavendish. His name was Henry Cavendish. So this law is a universal, this law is Newton's universal law of gravitation, but this value of a g was determined by another scientist called Henry Cavendish. So that's about the universal law of gravitation students. Now students, we will talk about <coughs> one more important term, it's a gravity. Now gravity means the force of attraction, the force of attraction between the earth and any bodies. So this gravity word is not used for any other uh, uh, bodies. This is only for the earth and the body. The gravitational force of attraction between the earth and any other body is called a gravity. Force of gravitation of the earth. Every object on the earth's surface is pulled by the earth towards its center. The force is called a force of gravity or gravity. So how much is that force? That force is given as F is equal to M times G. What is this G? G is acceleration due to gravity. The value of the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square. It's an acceleration. You know students from the past chapters, if a <coughs> force is applied to a body, the unbalanced force causes acceleration. The same here, the gravity, the gravitational force or the gravitational pull of the earth causes the body to accelerate. So the body accelerates. The rate at which the body accelerates under the effect of the gravitational pull of the earth is called acceleration due to gravity and the value near the earth's surface is found to be 9.8 meter per second square. And this value is not fundamental constant or universal constant. This value is constant near the surface of the earth. If you move away from the surface of the earth, if you go higher and higher or suppose if you go downwards, deep inside the earth, the value of this g may change. 
so the value of a g changes with depth and a height now student as i mentioned about the acceleration due to gravity so here is the acceleration due to gravity so the force causes the body to accelerate the unbalanced force causes the body to accelerate similarly in case of the gravitational pull of the earth the gravitational pull of the earth causes the body to accelerate say suppose a body or a anything falls from a height that's because of the gravitational pull of the earth so the gravitational pull of the earth causes that body to accelerate and that acceleration gained by the body is called acceleration due to gravity and the acceleration due to gravity as i mentioned is found to be near the earth's surface so 9.8 meter per second square student this is how the value of a g is calculated g is equal to capital g into m divided by r square now capital g as i mentioned that's a universal gravitational constant and the value is 6.67 into 10 to minus 11 newton meter square per kg square and capital m that's the mass of the earth and r that's the radius of the earth if you plug in all the values here and if i calculate if i simplify we get the value of a g as a 9.8 meter per second square and now this is small g can from this equation small g is inversely proportional to the radius of the earth so that means where the radius of the earth is smaller the <coughs> g value is found to be larger and the, where the value of r the radius of the earth is larger the value of a g is found to be smaller student our earth is not perfectly spherical our earth is somewhat oval in shape so we have the two radius we can say this is the equatorial radius and this is the polar radius you can see this polar radius smaller polar radius are smaller and the equatorial radius are larger so polar radius is smaller means radius is small means small uh, larger g that means near the poles near the poles the value of a g is large and you can see this equatorial radius is larger so equatorial radius larger means the value of a g so near the equator the value of a g is found to be smaller so that's how the value of a g changes with height and altitudes and depth now student let's move on to another topic that's what about the mass and weight what is mass and weight so <clears throat> student mass the amount of a matter contained in a body is called a mass now we know about this definition right from our low classes we've been studying so what is weight weight is a force the force by which the earth pull all of us towards its center that's the weight what is mass mass is a constant quantity mass never changes wherever you go wherever you take a body in the space the mass will remain constant mass never changes but the weight is variable means the weight can changes depending upon the places mass is a scalar quantity to define the mass we need just a magnitude we don't need the direction so that's what we uh, call mass as scalar quantity weight is a vector quantity weight it's a vector quantity weight the direction of weight is always downward the weight is the weight always acts downward the weight of a body always acts downward now to the next point about the mass mass is measured by physical balance we know the beam balance so using beam balance we measure the mass but weight is measured by a spring balance spring balance spring balance is a <coughs> machine that measures the weight of a body so that's a simple definition on the difference between the mass and the weight now let's move on to another important topic what is it it's a free fall free fall means if a body falls from a height student under the effect of a gravitational pull alone gravitational force alone with no other force acting on it that kind of a fall of a body is called a free fall that means if a body or if a ball falls from a height so the number of force acts on it so suppose the gravitational pull of the earth the air resistance the viscous force and many other forces acting on it so we cannot say such fo such fall as a free fall if we eliminate all this resistive force and the body falls under the influence of the gravitational pull only we can say such fall as a gravitational fall or i mean this a free fall so student i hope you understood this lecture of uh, gravitation where we have discussed the universal law of gravitation uh, the difference between mass and weight the free fall and acceleration due to gravity so with that we end today's discussion in the next lecture we will be discussing something uh, which is uh, numerical numerical problems so thank you